Greetings, welcome back to Black Bear News, where climate change is always happening faster than expected. And uh, let's start off with some newsy type articles. <clears throat> this one from CNN, Trump's failure to fight climate change is a crime against humanity. This is from October 18th by Jeffrey Sachs. President Donald Trump, Florida Governor Rick Scott, Florida Senator Marco Rubio, and others who oppose action to address human-induced climate change <clears throat> should be held accountable for climate crimes against humanity. They are authors and agents of systemic, uh, systematic policies that deny basic human rights to their own citizens and people around the world, <clears throat> including the rights to life, health, and property. These politicians have blood on their hands, and the death toll continues to rise. Trump remains in willful denial of the thousands of deaths caused by his government's inept, underfunded, and under-motivated response to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico last year. The image that will remain in history is of the president gleefully throwing paper towels for a photo op as the people of Puerto Rico around him suffered and died of neglect. Last month, Hurricane Florence claimed at least 48 deaths, with more likely to come in its aftermath. This past week, Hurricane Michael has claimed at least 32 lives, with more than 1,000 people reportedly still missing. The final death toll will likely soar in the months ahead as the residual, uh, residual consequences of the storm become more clear. As the earth warms due to the continued burning of coal, oil, and gas, climate-related disasters that include high intensity and in hurricanes, floods, droughts, extreme precipitation, <clears throat> forest fires, and heat waves pose rising dangers to life and property. Hurricanes become more destructive as warmer ocean waters feed more energy to the storms. Warmer air also carries more moisture for devastating rainfalls, while rising sea levels lead to more flooding. <clears throat> Yet Trump and his minions are the loyal servants of the fossil fuel industry. <clears throat> well, I'm glad that, you know, this is being said in the mainstream media um, has much of this been mentioned about the fossil fuel company, the heads of the fossil fuel companies, the companies themselves? Um, I'm sure it's been talked about, but, you know, on, on CNN, has CNN ever said we should be arresting and trying CEOs of fossil fuel companies <clears throat> ever? I wonder. Just a question, but uh, I'm glad that Trump is is hated enough uh, to actually have this be said in the mainstream media. Um, it's an idea whose time has come for sure. Um, but while we're arresting Trump for these crimes against humanity, let us round up a few more uh, who certainly fit the bill. Um, let's 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 get a bigger shovel. <laughs> let's get a bigger scoop. <laughs> Um, I'm all for it. Eh, let's see, hold on, lost this. Uh, next up from Newsweek, or no, sorry, USA Today, from Crystal Hayes. This is from October 20th. Trump says U.S. will pull out of nuke treaty with Russia that limited number of missiles. President Donald Trump says Saturday he would pull out of a Cold War era treaty with Russia that limited the number of missiles in each country. Trump said Moscow had violated the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty and he would halt the agreement. We're going to terminate the agreement and we're going to pull out, Trump said, when leaving a rally in Nevada Saturday afternoon. He said the U.S. would pull out and then we are going to develop the weapons unless Russia and China agree to a new deal, though China isn't currently part of the agreement. Russia has violated the agreement. They've been violating it for many years and we're not gonna let them violate a nuclear agreement and go out and do weapons and we're not allowed to. They're gonna do weapons. <clears throat> um, I'm, I'm wondering, I'm curious as, if, as to if we have violated the same agreement. And if we have, how often, how, you know, how, how majorly have we violated it? Um, that is a question I did not do any research on, but I bet that there is an answer to that. And I bet the answer is very interesting. 
anyways, it's not a great thing. Um, not good at all. Of course, we have an election coming up, uh, midterms. Um, I don't know. I, I think we're going to have to just do our best to vote against this seemingly endless wave of ridiculousness. Um, you know, really, uh, honestly, I'm going to generally just vote blue and where I can vote green or where it makes sense. I don't know what else to do. Uh, there are a few candidates, candidates that I, um, that I'm excited about, but not, not many, <clears throat> but there's a few, you know, it would be really, so what I heard was, uh, well, this goes along with another article I was going to read. I guess this is a, this is a good little dovetail into, um, this article, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but <clears throat> just going to give a basic overview. The longest goodbye, why the Clintons need to leave the stage here. Here, this is from Truth Out. Um, this is from William Rivers Pitt, October 19th. Uh, to the great confusion of many, Bill and Hillary Clinton will embark on a multi city speaking tour beginning one scant week after the 2018 midterm elections. They will visit seven cities together, including Montreal, Toronto, Vancouver, and immortal Wallingford, Connecticut, and will join Michelle Obama for another six engage engagements. Without a clear purpose, the Clintons tour has the feel of some strange roadshow zoo. Come see the politicians, only $375 a ticket. Attendees will have the opportunity to hear one-of-a-kind conversations with the two leaders as they tell their stories from some of the most impactful moments in modern history, explains Live Nation, which is promoting the tour. Right, except when someone asks about the impeachment, Monica Lewinsky or Bill Clinton's place in the constellation of Me Too villains. Like as not, attendees will hear nothing of the sort. The itinerary for this journey only involves cities very friendly to the former first lady and uncomfortable, that's why they're in Canada. <laughs> uh, and uncomfortable questions of any sort will probably be checked with the co coats at the door. The Clintons for their part are offering no public explanation for the timing or the purpose of this road trip, they aren't promoting a book like Obama is, and the midterm campaigns will all be over. Spokesman for Bill and Hillary Clinton didn't respond to the questions about whom the ticket sales benefit. Or what exactly the message of the events would be, or why the former two-term president and former secretary of state feel the need to hit the road now as a slice of the nation looks to the future leaders to take on Trump. And that's all I'm going to read of this article. I'll link it below. But what I heard um, from one pundit, um, well, what I heard was that Clinton, uh, Hillary was, uh, or her organization, her pack, or I don't know what is, uh, throwing some money behind Andrew Gillum in Florida. And this pundit had the feeling or the notion that, that Hillary might possibly actually attempt to run for president again in 2020, which is just horrifying. Um, if you, if you wanted to divide a nation any more than we're divided right now, have Hillary Clinton be a candidate or try to be a nominee for president in 2020. That would just be absolutely horrific. And, and, um, I mean, it would just be a bloodbath. That would just be insanely scary. Uh, on the flip side, I'm just going to say this right now, and um, I may get, I'll probably get more vocal about this. The Democrats, if they have one brain cell left among them, should right now <laughs> say Bernie Sanders is our candidate for president in 2020. It is the only way they are going to beat Trump. The only way. There is no other candidate with his visibility, with his clout, um, with his experience with his track record, with his already fundraising ability, like, you know, he has problems. Um, he's not a perfect candidate, 
but the Democrats don't have anyone near his popularity or anyone that can touch him ideologically. <clears throat> um, and Trump is just a, right now, he is kind of just a juggernaut. Like, you know, people, it doesn't matter how crazy he is. It doesn't matter how, um, all the, all the insane things that he's doing, he just cannot, he cannot be stopped. And I'm really concerned that the, you know, the, the Republicans are going to pick up, actually, they're probably going to pick up some more se seats in the midterms. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if there was no, little to no blue wave, and there actually was a bit of a red wave. Um, I just don't see, I don't see any co cohesiveness amongst Democrats. I just see a couple of pockets of some progressive candidates that have a little bit of a bigger platform. That's Andrew Gillum, Beto O'Rourke, and um, Ocasio-Cortez. Uh, um, I just don't see, I don't see anybody else that has like the national, uh, the national standing. Um, there's a few others, Tulsi Gabbard, Elizabeth Warren. Um, but just, I'm just talking about midterm elections right now. But anyway, so if any Democrats are listening, if anybody else cares, by all means, and you know, for the love of God, <laughs> um, not make Bernie Sanders your candidate right now. Just, just put all your weight and all your might and all your money behind him and run him against Trump. And he's our only chance and will probably, could actually be, successful i'm 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 more than certain that he would have a, a really good shot at that anyways that's all i'm going to talk about uh on the political side i'm going to move on to this article from earther <clears throat> here's where the post-apocalyptic water wars will be fought a united nations report published last week said we have about a decade to get climate change under control, which let's be honest, isn't likely to happen. So break out your goalie masks and harpoon guns, a Mad Max future awaits. Now, as new research points out, we even know where the earth, where on earth the inevitable water wars are most likely to take place. Sarcasm aside, this report is actually quite serious. Published today in Global Environmental Change, the paper identifies several hotspots around the globe where hydropolitical issues in the parlance of the researchers are likely to give rise to geopolitical tensions and possibly even conflict. The authors of the new report, a team from the European Commission's Joint Research Center, say the escalating effects of climate change in conjunction with ongoing trends in population growth could trigger regional instability and social unrest in regions where fresh water is scarce and where bordering nations have to manage and share this increasingly scarce commodity. Obviously, the causes of geopolitical tension and conflict are complex. As the new report makes clear, we shouldn't underestimate the role that water is going to play in the future. Competition for dwindling water resources, the authors say, will exacerbate tensions on a global scale in the coming decades, with certain regions more vulnerable than others. But how are the various factors that influence water demand and availability likely to affect populations around the world? The new study, led by JRC scientist Fabio Farinosi, was an attempt to answer the, this critical question and also create a model that can predict where and when future water wars might arise. In addition to pinpointing the geographical areas and countries most likely to experience hydrosocial issues, the JRC scientists are also hoping to kickstart conversations amongst all the parties involved to mitigate water conflicts before they arise. <clears throat> Farinosi's team used a machine learning driven approach investigating various factors, uh, that have traditionally given rise to water-related tensions. An algorithm studied previous episodes of conflict over water resources, and of which there is no shortage. Check out this impressive database of water-related conflicts to get a sense of how common water wars are in our history. The algorithm considered access to fresh water, climate stress, two greenhouse gas emission scenarios were considered, one moderate and one extreme. Guess which one is the likely? Population trends, human pressures on water supply, socioeconomic conditions, and more. Looking at the results, the researchers found that the conflicts are more likely to arise in areas where a trans, trans boundary to water is present, such as the shared lake, basin, or river. 
population density high and power imbalances and climate stresses exist. A number of potentially problematic areas were identified, including five, five hotspots. The Nile, Ganges, uh, Brahmaputra, Indus, Tigris, Euphrates, and the Colorado rivers. Worldwide, the researchers found that rising temperatures and population growth will increase the chance of cross-border conflicts by between 75 to 95% in the next 50 to 100 years. That's not encouraging. But as Farinosi points out, this does not mean that the case, each case will result in conflict. It depends on how well prepared and equipped the countries are to cooperate, he said in the statement. This is where we hope our research can help by raising awareness of the risks so that solutions can be sought early on. To that end, the JRC researchers also created an index and a model to help identify regions at risk by escalating hydropolitical conflicts. And they're working on a more thorough analysis of the larger, largest river basins in Africa in collaboration with local institutions. This study reveals some scary things about the future, but there are some key limitations. The results were computer generated and based on historical episodes of water conflicts and a normative analysis that doesn't take future developments into account, such as geopolitical changes that could either exacerbate or alleviate the trends highlighted in the study. Then the analysis depends on two climate scenarios, but the future could change if we start to curb greenhouse gas emissions. Don't laugh. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. Regardless, the future looks rough. If these models are correct, correct and we fail to address these issues before they arise, we run the risk of stratifying the human population even further. There are so many issues that divide us today. And climate change only promises to make this worse. And that, my friends, is that. But um, what I needed to... Read was a... I, should, I actually wanted to start this video with this story, but maybe I'll end it. Hurricane Willa, now a category four storm, threatens Mexico's Pacific coast. And possibly um, the band of migrants heading toward the border, which seems to be such a huge news story. It's an all day story. That's all they talked about all day long. Uh, Hurricane Willow, potentially catastrophic storm, swept towards Mexico's Pacific coast with winds of 155 miles per hour, the National Hurricane Center said on Monday. Forecasters expect the Category 4 storm to make, four storm to make landfall along Mexico's southwestern coast Tuesday afternoon or evening. Willa is an extremely dangerous storm that is expected to bring life-threatening storm surge, wind, and rainfall over the west central and southwestern Mexico. The Hurricane Center. Um, I don't know. I don't know what that sentence was about. After it briefly strengthened to a Category 5 storm, it weakened slightly Monday afternoon. Uh, Willa was located about 135 miles south-southwest of Las Islas Marias, Mexico, and some 110 miles southwest of Cabo Corrientes, Mexico, the Hurricane Center said in its 5 p.m. ET Eastern Time advisory. It was moving north at eight miles per hour. A hurricane warning was posted for a stretch of shore between San Blas and Mazatlan. A tropical storm warning was in effect for Playa Parula, Parula and to San Blas and north of Mazatlan to Bahia to Bahia. Enrico, Enrique Moreno, the mayor of Esquinapa, said officials were trying to evacuate everyone in the village of uh, Tequepan. The Associated Press reports, he said nearly 3,000 people were affected, but some residents would stay. The people don't want to evacu evacuate, but it's for their security. Uh, in Mazatlan, Mayor Jose Joel um, Busiegues, Busiegues said officials were preparing shelters and monitoring low-lying areas, the AP reports. The popular vacation town is home to a large number of American and Canadian expatriates. Forecasters said Willow was expected to produce total rainfall accumulations of 6 to 12 inches with local amounts up to 18 inches, according to across portions of western Jalisco, western Nayarit, and southern Sinaloa in Mexico. The rainfall could cause some life-threatening flash flooding and landslides. Further inland, Willow was expected to produce rainfall amounts of two to four inches across portions of Zacateca, Durango, southeast Chihuahua, and uh, Cojuila in Mexico, 
the local amounts up to six with local amounts up to six inches possible. That could cause life-threatening flash flooding. After Willow makes its way across Mexico, it, would, it could drop between one and three inches of rain on central and southern Texas during the middle of the week. The additional rainfall could cause additional flooding in, the, in already saturated areas. And leaves me with one more story. Speaking of Texas, uh, let's actually going to do one more story. Uh, Austin Austin issues citywide boil water notice, calls for action to avoid running out of water. Um, so there's a flood affecting, I think, the Travis River. Is that right? And it's it's affecting the <clears throat> drinking water in Austin. Early Monday morning, Austin Water issued a boil water notice for all of its customers due to elevated levels of silt from last week's flooding. And by Monday night, the city was warning residents that immediate action was needed to avoid running out of water. The water system is the most recent infrastructure to struggle to keep up with. The impact of unprecedented rains, city manager Spencer Cronk said at a Monday press conference. Last month was the wettest September on record in Texas. Heavy rains last week in central Texas and hill country led to catastrophic flooding. A high level of debris, silt, and mud required, requires additional filtration that slows the process of getting treated water into the system, according to a city statement. Today, we are now asking you not to drink from the sink, Kronk said. In the abundance of caution, we are issuing a boil water notice for all customers of Austin Water. This is the first time in the utility's history that a notice of this kind has been issued for the entire system. The notice will be lifted once tre treatment systems can be stabilized, according to the city statement. Customers are being encouraged to boil water for drinking, cooking, brushing their teeth, and for making ice. Activities such as showering and do doing laundry are safe, but the city is asking people to conserve water if at all possible. Um, that's all I'm going to read of that. Crazy, wacky, kooky stuff. Um, and I actually completely missed the flooding story uh, last week in Texas. My apologies. I should have been at least aware of that, but I, I was not. With all the stuff going on, all the news happening, all the things that I had in my queue. Um, but interesting that Texas is, once again, or you know, interesting or <laughs> um, totally expected, uh, for the third year in a row, um, Texas is under, you know, a lot of flood, um, uh, under a lot of flood problem problems. Um, this has been happening at least two or three years in a row that, um, places in Texas have been getting mon monumental floods, um, hundred year, 500 year, thousand year floods. Uh, haven't really seen anything going on in Louisiana or any other, um, parts in that area, but um, I imagine that will be happening. And of course, you know, hurricanes and hurricanes and more hurricanes uh, still going on, um, still happening. Warm water affecting storm formation. Um, and I'm sure that's gonna escalate, continue and continue to es escalate. Uh, that's all I have for you tonight. Thank you so much for your eyes, your ears, and your conscience. If you would like to support this channel, you can do so at the links below. Until next time, peace.